Hey guys, Ollie here with BD Outdoors, and today I got a special guest, Captain Dwayne Diego. He yeah. runs uh, Pinnacle Sport Fishing out of Dana Landing on San Diego. I've known Dwayne for a lot of years now. He's definitely one of the Highline guys here in San Diego, if not the Highline guy. And uh, he shares my same passion for these big bluefin. So Dwayne and I are gonna kind of talk about, you know, rolling up to the grounds, maybe even before we get to the grounds, like what are you looking for? What are you doing in terms of electronics to find it? What are you doing once you find it? Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff, even before you leave the dock, like what's your game plan? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of gathering the info from the days prior. Fortunately, I, I'm able to run every day doing charters. You kind of compare the notes where you caught your fish, and you can kind of usually see a line of where they're traveling, why they're going there, and that's all gonna be water temperature, water clarity. With that said, you know, temperature breaks are always good. Typically, this bluefin's gonna like the cooler side of the water. I also really like to look for chalky water, transition water, color yep. breaks. That's a really important factor with these fish. They have no problem swimming in and out of those. That dirtier water holds the bait, and that's why they're there. So that's where you start, you know, you do your homework on that end and kind of plot where you're gonna be going the next day. That's basically what we're doing. I mean, the one thing that these bluefin what you can count on is they'll break every rule, mm. right? Because yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I think the number one thing that I always want to find is the bait. Yeah. Clean water, dirty water, whatever. They'll go into the dirtiest, coldest water some days where you're just like, what the hell are they even yeah. doing in here? Mm -hmm. And then other days you find them right where you expect, nice blue water where it meets some green water or whatever. But yeah, we're basically doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, and then when you get, so you've identified a few zones, right? I think that's where the electronics really come into play. Bluefin love to jump, love to splash, all that stuff, but a lot of times they run deep, man, and you wouldn't even know that they were there. Yeah, yeah, you get two sides of them, you know. You get the visual game where it's, you know, it's telltale, it's really obvious where they are, it's really easy to track them, it's really easy to follow them, that's usually on the foamer type stuff, or the breezer type stuff. God forbid there's no foamer action going on, but there's a lot of fish, and there's a lot of wind, and they're not breezing around either. That's when those fish sound down, you're looking 30, 40 fathoms, 50 fathoms and you've got to have the power to get down there and look like that with your electronics. And that's where Freno comes really, really into play. Their sending systems on those units are so true. Really get true picture, really know what you're looking at, whether it's bait, feed layer, fish, catching the edge of a fish. It's, it's just, it's a really true thing. You know, another, another thing we like to use is the bird radar, you know, getting into zones, knowing you're seeing start, starting to see the life you want to see. The good thing to do is turn on your radar. You want to kick your gain up really high right there. Um, you want to receive a bunch of feedback on your screen from your radar to the point where you're questioning like what you're really looking at and if you're even going to be able to see anything. You'll be pretty impressed once you do. And the rule of thumb with that is you want to only have it stretched out four to five miles. I like to just have it where I just can't see. And you're going to get a good return off the bird and you're gonna, you'll be able to run there. It's not like you're gonna go chase something that's 10 miles away. That and those birds there, are showing you know? up to you like a red, a yeah, red blotch yeah, in yeah. a sea of fuzz, basically. Exactly, red blotches. Sometimes you'll get a whole blotch. It almost looks like you're picking up a boat. And that's a bird school. Okay. That's a bird school. Getting to know your meter, getting to know what's under your meter, that's one of the hardest things I see. Like, I tell guys this all the time, and it's so hard to stop in the middle of a wide open bite and just go, you guys fish, I'm gonna sit here and learn something. Yeah. And that's when the cell phone comes out, you know, and I, I'm taking pictures of it. Yep. I'm sure you're doing the same oh, thing. Yeah, right? 100%. Once I got the TZ Touch, you know, I was able to get it to where I, I could work with it right out of the box, but it took two and a half years to get it to where it's like, okay, I know exactly what this fish is, I know exactly what it's doing, I know what this bait is, everything, there's no question about it. And it's from, you know, taking the time when we're on a bite to go in there and mess with the settings, take the pictures, make the notes, like use my eyes. And the good thing with the TZ Touch uh, settings is when you're using them, you can still see the screen coming on. So you're, you're adjusting, you can see it fatten up as it's coming on. Real time. Real, real time, time yeah, right huge, there, which is huge, 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 you know? I, I can't say enough how important it is to take that time and go inside your, your wheelhouse or go sit in front of your monitor while your friends are still catching fish and make the adjustments that you need to make because it'll, the truer your, your readings are, the better fishing run you're gonna be. The more you're gonna understand what's under the boat. The more, the more you understand at one point, like, hey, I've already got you know X amount of small fish in my boat, I really wanna only stop on big fish because I only have this much bait. Yep. You know you, when to stop your boat, you just don't stop on a random mark because it's a nice mark. You're like, okay, this is what I wanna see. That's that familiarity and the confidence that you gotta have in your electronics. And that same confidence tells me when the stuff dries up, I drift away from it, like I know when I'm in the zone, I know when I'm not in the zone, yeah, and it's exactly. time to do something different. It's so key to really understand what's going on under your boat and around your boat with your electronics. And I think the pointers that we've given you here will get you a better understanding of, you know, basically it's pay attention, right? Yeah, Take yeah. notes, be smarter than the next guy, and you are gonna definitely up your fish count.